In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to change any Gara system bounding box per instance and also how to create debug that's gonna show you the size of your bounds. Like this. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about bounds. So Unreal have this built-in bounds debug that you can find in show, type bounds, and press on this one. And it's gonna show you the bounding box of every selected item in your viewport. For example, this is a static mesh, and this is my Niagara system. But let's focus on this one. This is my bounding box of a meter called red. I have set it here, and it's basically 200 on 200 on 200 centimeters. And why bounding boxes are important? Because if I lower my camera to make the bounce uh, outside of my viewport, as you can see, my whole particle system will disappear. So your bounding box always needs to match the particles. So for example, I can type here like a minus 1000. It's still not enough, but you see the, the idea. And second thing that you need to know is that if I have two emitters and my second emitter have own bounding box here, and now I enable both of them, the bounding box will combine. And the next thing is that if you have your uh, system properties and you set your fixed bounds here, it's gonna override the bounding box of your whole system. So keep it in mind. Okay, so here is my second system, which is a stream of particles with some forward velocity that is controlled by my exposed value called velocity intensity. So I can uh, type here like a zero and my stream is gonna go, go down. So let's copy this particle system. So I have second instance and for this one, let's type here 500. So now I have two systems that should have different bounding boxes because of the shape. But right now, both of them are sharing the bounding box because by default, every particle system that is a instance will have this bounding box set here inside the emitter. So now I'm gonna show you how to create these two modules where first one is gonna change the bounding box per instance and the second one it's gonna show you the bounding box as a debug. Okay, so before we start, notice that I have made four user parameters values here. So it's a velocity intensity, which is a float, bounce min max, which is a vector, and show debug, which is a bool. And I've made them so I can control each instance on my level with different values. So for example, this one have velocity 500 and this one have velocity zero. And same thing I'm gonna do with my bounding box. So here on my scratch pads, you can see that I have assigned this value to my inputs. So let's go in. Okay, this one is very simple. It's basically three nodes. So here I have two uh, inputs of type vector, bounce min, bounce max, which are uh, assigned to my user parameter. And this one, emitter properties, is a data interface that you can find in make new data interface and emitter properties. From this one, you can call a function called set fixed bounds and plug your local min and local max to your, to your values. I also saved those values as an emitter namespace. This is gonna allow me to use those values in my second emitter. Okay, so here is my second scratch pad. This one is placed in emitter update stage. So let's go inside. Okay, so I have here a few nodes, but let's start from the left. Debug draws, this is an interface that allows you to draw shapes in your Niagara systems. You can learn more about this in my last video. So I'm using it to draw box. This is a function that's gonna draw a box uh, depend on my uh, inputs. So next one is draw debug. This is a boolean that is assigned to my show debug uh, user parameter. And this one is uh, as a execute. It's gonna show and hide my debug. Next one is a engine owner rotation. This one is gonna rotate this box to the same rotation as the particle uh, system. 
system simulation this is basically the position of your system in the world so this point i'm transferring it to vector and this is the center also i'm adding here an offset this offset is for supporting a non-uniform shapes of bounding boxes like in this example where x is a different so i'm adding my mean to max value so uh, minus 300 plus 500 which is a 200 and then i need half of this value and also i'm using this transform vector because otherwise there will be a range glitch so you need to transform this value to the simulation space from local space and here at the bottom i'm calculating the extent of this of this bounding box so i'm subtracting from me bounce mean my bounce max so minus 300 minus 500 which, which is a minus 800 then i need the half of this value and this is basically my extents and also you can change the color Okay, so here on my viewport, I can press on my first instance, set the show debug to true, do the same thing with my second instance. And now let's try to match the bounding box shape. So in Y axis, I can make it smaller, maybe 50. And same here. Maybe same thing for negative X. Uh, maybe lower the Z. Okay. And much bigger Z negative. And same for the positive X. Okay. So here I have bounding box that's more representative of this shape. And for this one, I can do the same, same stuff. So the Y very low. X positive the same stuff. Sorry, Z. The Z negative 1000. And for X, oh, not this one. Maybe 500. No, more. Yeah, that's better. And now I have custom bounding box for each my instance. And then I can hide the, the debug. it works okay so thank you for watching and see you next week